think it's safe to say these conditions are slightly worse than the ones we've been up against in the other Predator tours. Yep, minus five last night. 1,038 Honestly. air pressure forecast for today, bright sunshine forecast for today. And as you can see, the lake's looking absolutely stunning. This no, is the first uh, yeah. time we've seen it. <laughs> no visibility, but on the plus side, we've got a lot of water to go at. Yeah. Because it's February and this is a carp fishery, there's hardly any anglers around. So we've got plenty of uh, room, plenty of swims. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's four or five lakes to explore. So we've got plenty of options. So hopefully we'll have a chance or two. Well. This is linear fisheries, isn't it? And this is for what the tar farm, the new tar farm complex, yeah, opened yeah. last year. So I mean, this is all very new to me. These swims look uh, very posh, to <laughs> yeah. be fair. It's uh, I'm used to putting my bivy up on a pile of stinging nettles. So uh, yeah, this is luxury in comparison. But I think in terms of starting plan of attack, I think we're both just going to go roving with lures. We don't know where to start, let's be no. honest. I mean, the, <laughs> these lake, I mean, we can't even see the lake. So we know there's four lakes here somewhere, but this mist is thick. It's going to burn off quick, but all that's going to do is bring out the bright sunshine and it's going to make it even more tricky. So we're here for two days. We, we need to find some fish. We're not going on anything. No one's really fished these lakes. So we need to know really where to be. And the only way we're going to do that is by hopefully getting a few follows, a few hits, and actually finding some fish. So, start with lures. I'm gonna give it at least two hours with the lures, and then I might start bait fishing for the pike, because I'll probably be you bored need after a cup two of tea. hours. <laughs> yeah, I need a cup of tea, and I'll be bored after two hours. So that's, yeah. my, that's my plan, two hours of lure fishing, and then hopefully swap over to dead baits for the pike. Well, I've got four lure rods ready, and I'm basically gonna be like an octopus, running around these lakes, and yeah, fingers crossed we're gonna bump into something. We know there's perch, we know there's pike. I'm happy to catch either, so I will be trying for both. Um, but like I say, at the moment, it's all about using lures which are gonna enable us to travel fast as well and move around these lakes and cover some water. It's, um, it's gonna be tricky, but I don't know, mate, I'm well up for it and I think well, we need to start right away, really. Well, I'm ready. The sooner we start, the sooner I can warm up. <laughs> All right, mate, let's crack on. <laughs> well, I think one of my main focuses today is going to be pike, but we do know there's a good few perch in here as well. So I'm kind of trying to get just to see whether I can find some perch to start with. That's the first port of call for me and then I can switch over to really concentrating on the pike. But what I'm doing to start with is just, for a search tactic, one of our little bladed jigs, a slick finesse trailer on the back, um, and that's a really good way of getting a response from perch. And it's minus five. I mean, generally I think they're gonna be a lot slower on a day like this. But if I can see one follow, or if I can just get a hit, what I'll do then is I'll go back to one of my uh, creature bait rods, cast that over and work that really slowly in the area and hopefully pick up a few fish. But like I say, we're just going to have a few casts in each swim. Um, I'm going to use the bladed jig to start with. And once I've got an idea whether I think there's any perch about, I'll then put through the replicant and start having a look for pike. Because once again, if we get a pike follow the bait, then or even hit it catch catch or follow we just want i want something to go on because tomorrow i am thinking about fishing a dead bait so i'll either fish floats and move around or i'll end up fishing static these big gravel pits quite often you can wait a while for a bite from a pike um it's not like fishing my drains back home where i'd be constantly leapfrogging on a regular basis these waters, they lend, do lend themselves to sitting it out for a bit longer. But we're gonna keep casting. Lou's doing the same. He's casting out in various places. Hopefully between us, we're gonna be able to build a picture. And um, yeah, hope we'll see what happens.
So I'm only on my second swim of the morning and no follows or hits as yet. But one thing that's apparent very quickly is this is a very deep lake. I would hasten a guess that it's probably close to 20 foot at the sort of range I can cast this replicant. And you hit a shelf as you as you come in up uh, with a bit of weed on it. So I think when it comes to dead baiting and a little later on, targeting that drop off will be uh, an obvious starting point. But I did have a little look. There's uh, every lake on this complex has contour maps on the linear website so you can actually see where they've been out with an echo sounder and mapped the lake beds out and uh, I had a little look before coming here I was looking at it last night and I know there is some shallower plateau areas I can't remember what swim I'll have to get the map out just uh, to have a look once this uh, mist clears so I can actually sort of uh, make out distances etc but I think um, there's definitely some interesting features to have a go at um, with the with the baits later and this lake is the only lake on the whole linear complex I believe which allows bait boats as well because there's only swims on one bank and the no swims on the far side so they allow bait boats for the carp anglers and the, and the predator anglers on here so I have got the boat with me, uh, which has got an echo sounder on it. So I will be able to later on, if I, if I want to use that echo sounder to locate the drop off accurately and some of the, the shallower features as well, because I don't really want to be fishing too deep. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, we'll see later on, but for now, just going to keep searching out using the replicant. It's, uh, it's kind of my favorite lure. It's easy. I'm not technical, so it's easy to cast and retrieve. I can cover a lot of water um, with it. And these pike aren't heavily pressured, so I would fancy that if they're up for a feed, they will, will hit the reps. So it's my starting point, and uh, I'll touch base with Matt in a little while and see if he's having any interest doing what he's doing, and I might copy what he's doing if uh, if he's doing better than me. But the moment just having a problem with the the ice gathering in my rings and my rod and building up on the line as I'm retrieving it's uh I say minus five probably not the one for lure fishing today for pike I'd, I'd be happier with the dead baits I think this afternoon but keep going too early yet to write it off Here we go. Perch, massive perch. Ben, get that net. Ah, oh, it's huge. I have just had an absolute monster perch whack the replicant. It was on for a, for a few seconds, sh shook its head, the, the rep fell out. Such a big bait. I've just swapped over to my perch rod quickly with a much smaller bait now. Obviously that perch might just have eyes that are far bigger than its belly but if it's still in the area I'm just hoping it might take a smaller bait and actually be easier to uh, to hook but here we go second cast on the uh, Texas rig and this is a lovely perch good fish this Looks like the same one that just that I just lost. To be fair, on the replicant. Here we go. First fish of the day in the net. Yes. Oh, what a fish! What a buzz! If that that's close to three pound, yeah, it's three pound easily. That could be a PB. First fish of the day. Yes, Ben. Well done, mate. Had it wallop a replicant. Well, that replicant there, the perch one, just at the bottom of this drop off here. I was like, bed, bed, bed. Yeah. It was like I thought it was a pike because it hit it yeah, so yeah, hard. Yeah. And then it just shook its head, come off. But the way it swam away, it was like it didn't know it had been hooked. It, 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 was, it just drifted. It's the same fish, we think. It looks, it looks, the, same. looks, the, same. looks the same fish. But it just drifted, it drifted away really slowly. 
second cast, I didn't even like, I just used the bait that was on the rod, which is a fl fluoro um, creature bait. Lemon tiger. Yeah. Lemon tiger creature Nothing bait. Like what it's just here. They're feeding, mate. We're going to weigh the fish um, because my PB is about £2.15 and this, and everybody's saying that it should be a £3.00. So we're going to weigh it and uh, get a quick look at it and then get her, get her back because uh, I don't want to fish. Yeah, because Matt wants to carry on fishing. <laughs> Matt's going to bring her over. Look at the colours and everything on it. Very proud fish. There you go, you take that, I'll take the net away, mate. You take the net. safe to say you put the PB, mate. Oh, mate, yeah, I knew that. Go on, announce your PB. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Well done, mate. What a first fish from Linear Tar Farm. It's incredible, isn't it? Second swim. And especially when you look at the conditions around us, minus five, absolutely PB, incredible. Three pound thirteen. What a start! <laughs> yeah, look mad. at it. Awesome fish. Using, the, using a big old replicant on, looking for pike. Greedy perch, it's the replicant. Comes off pretty quickly. Swap over to a perch setup. Second cast. Bang. PB. Jobs are good, and let's get her back and try and catch some more. Yeah, we're in. I think it's a little pike. Yeah, it's a little pike. After you've just seen a near four pound perch, the hit you get, you're thinking, oh, it's gonna be a four pound perch, but it's not. But it's a fish. It goes to show the pike are moving as well. Right, I'm not gonna net this one. The, um, the hooks are out and he's very, very lightly hooked anyway. One thing I have noticed, if he stays on, I'll show you, is he's got a lot of leeches all over him. So these fish definitely aren't moving about much at the moment. Yeah, look at that. Can you see them? leeches that's just a sure sign that the fish have been sitting on the bottom for some time look at that it was barely hooked he says wow it's absolutely barely hooked but that was never coming off nice there you go my first ever fish from linear fisheries um Probably a little bit bigger than Lewis's one, but I think I know which one I'll prefer to have caught. Happy days, we'll go and get some more now. Whee, off she goes. I'll tell you what I can hear. I don't know if you can hear him. He's down there shouting me. Stanley. Ah, oh, it's time. <laughs> Come and drink my juice. <laughs> Shame you can't get around the back there, innit? I tell you what though, it'll be a good one for carping with because you can use a bait boat along this margin and stuff. There's plenty of spots to <clears throat> Yeah. Oh look, look at the bubbles off the margin. It's a perch, perch. Good perch. Yeah! Yeah, buddy! Right. Just dropped the hooks as well. It's out, the lure's, lure's out, yeah. So maybe it was a little pot, uh, little perch that hit. You were right, mate. Yeah. Do you know what? It don't matter, I caught it. Look at all the fizzing coming off this margin. What do you reckon? Is there a carp feeding down there? Or is there a, Get a bait back out. Or is there a big pike sat down there? Get your little lure on. Get your little lure on. 
See if we can get a couple more. Whee, another proud one. Finally my turn. Had that jack earlier, but just casting that little 10 centimeter, that little 10 centimeter roach replicant. Just had that one, beautiful fish. There's some, certainly some stunning fish in this place. I mean, you can, you can tell they've not really been targeted. They're certainly not very naive. They've been, um, they're really walloping the bigger baits. We just need to find them and keep searching. I'm gonna get this one back. Look how proud that fish is. Ah, nice. They're definitely getting a bit fatter now. Go on in, mate. That's a pike. Well, he's not even a bad one. Not massive, but lovely fish. Oh, I think I'm going to get... I'm not going to net him, otherwise I'm going to get caught up a lot. I'll get down here. Be a lot easier to deal with. He's a lovely looking fish though. Really nice condition, stunning markings. Absolutely nailed that replicant. Hey! Ah, oh, he's off. That's what happens when you don't net him. So, day one is coming to a close. It's been uh, it's been eventful in the morning, yeah. but that sun's killed it. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it burnt off around half eleven. The mist, and then the suddenly we've just had bright sunshine. Yeah, and uh, I stopped around lure fishing around lunchtime, put dead baits out, and nothing. I didn't really expect it, but I just couldn't no. be bothered to carry on lure fishing, knowing that I was probably. Um, wasting my time, as you've proven this afternoon by not catching anything on well, the lures. Well, I tried for lures until a little bit after lunch. I mean, I've spent a bit of time just walking around with the deeper, trying to get an idea where to go. To be honest with you, we've both decided to come pretty much on a social. These these session, these yeah. spots are very, very similar. A lot of deep water yeah. in front of us. And then some shallow, again, we looked on the map, we could see some shallow areas. We've had Matt's bait boat out with the echo sounder found some shallower areas. I think all three of my rods are in between 15 and 18 foot. Mm. Um, yours similar? Mine will be, yeah. I mean, obviously you've got yours out. I'm yeah. gonna... You found some areas earlier with I a bay boat them. though for, for later yeah. on, haven't you? So so I just need to get down yeah. there and have a look for some perch now, because that's the next thing to do. Um, Given the conditions we've had and speaking to Ian Head Bailiff, the biggest known pike to have been caught out of this lake we believe mid to upper 20s and we see a photo of it and it was in the hours of darkness apparently it was caught a couple of hours into dark yep. so uh, we're going to fish a couple of hours into dark because with how bad the conditions have been the, the pike mm. might not have had much of a feed all day today and it might be just into dark and when the conditions they do have, have been feed. like this for a few days now yeah so it stands to reason that they are going to have a bit of a feed after dark it does happen on a regular basis so like we say we'll give it a couple of hours into dark then I think it's going to be what minus four again tonight. Yeah, it's forecasting so, a cold one, um, and then similar weather tomorrow. A little bit more cloud, hopefully. Wouldn't be so bad if we get a, a morning like we've had this morning, no. though, with a bit of mist in just to hold in. But that's yeah. what we're going to have to hope for. Just another good yeah. morning, yeah. which I think we'll have. But um, there's still time for you to get one this evening. Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent So I think we've on. just seen some small roach as well scatter was in the middle of a lake, so we can't do much about it, but it's still a very good sign. It's the yeah. first sign of life we've seen on the surface, isn't it? Yeah, no, we're coming into the witching hour now, aren't we? So yeah, I'll back you to catch another perch before- We'll give it a go, before mate. Before the day's out. I'll see what happens, hopefully. I'm just gonna sit, your... sit and uh, drink tea and watch the Get water. Stanley out. <laughs> yeah, no, fingers crossed, mate. I'm gonna go grab a lure rod. So we're having a go now in the spot where I had that perch earlier. I just wanted to come down quickly before it got too dark and just have a go. We, I mean, earlier we had, we had the perch 
I had another occurrence before that and that was it. So it's not like we're getting lots and lots of bites from here. So it's hard to say whether there is a good number of fish here or not. But we just got to keep giving it a go. That's, uh, we've only got two days. We're not getting many, many signs of what's working and what's not. And we just need to make the most of these, these spots where we've caught fish. I mean, we've only caught perch from two swims. But to be fair, I think by the time we moved on to the next lake, it was already probably a little bit too late. But I'm just giving it a bit of a go with a spin tail at the moment, just to quickly see if I can raise a response from a fish. And then I'm gonna try fishing really slowly with some creature baits. I think this is a, must be a pike, presumably. Yeah. Well, doesn't feel a bad pike, this. Well, <laughs> I've come over to try and catch a perch and I think I've got quite a big pike. This is taking the 10 centimeter catfish replicant as well. Oh, it's a lovely fish by the look of it. That just took it on the drop, just as it was descending. Oh, that's a mouth. That is a big old mouth. Oh, he's only gonna be hooked very lightly as well. There's only one little treble on this. No, he's not huge actually, but he's a nice fish. Yay. Oh, lovely fish. That is a lovely one. Nice. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Clipped on the little, the little 10 centimeter catfish replicant. You can just about see it, just on the side of him. Look at that. He's nailed that, on, just on the drop. Let me just get the net out of his scissors. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Probably about 16 pound, I would have thought this one. Well, there you go. A lovely pike, that one. And you can see it's taken that cat little, look at it, it's barely hooked. That little catfish replicant. But yeah, that's a good 16 pound, that one, 16, 17. Really nice fish. Certainly put a bend in that little uh, five to 21 Terminator rod. But yeah, I'll get the hook out. <laughs> Clamp. Good morning, day two. It's a milder morning than yesterday and uh, we can actually see the whole lake at this time and we couldn't do that yesterday. Um, both myself and Matt, we fished the dead baits until a couple of hours into darkness. I think we pulled them in around eight o'clock last night. No, no action, unfortunately, but we had a nice uh, nice Chinese and, uh, and enjoyed a good social with Ben and Samim. Got up about an hour before first light this morning. We both put the deads back out. Um, Matt being the impatient guy that he is, gave him an hour and literally on first light, he's hoinked him in and uh, he's gone off with the lure rods again. 
uh, playing to his strengths on the lure fishing, whereas I'm going to play to my strengths, which is being lazy and sitting on my hands. So I'm going to keep my dead baits out until it gets sunny. So having looked on uh, the Met Office app, it's saying that we're going to have some nice cloud cover until about 9 a.m. And then we're going to have the same kind of bright sunshine that we had yesterday. So I'm going to just be patient, sit on the deads until, like I say, that sun comes out. And then at the minute I'm 50-50, I'm either going to reel them in and I'm going to go lure fishing on some of the other lakes on the complex. I'm going to reel them in, change two rods over to floats and wander about on a couple of the other lakes, just chucking dead baits on floats. I haven't fully decided yet. I'll probably wait and see from Matt over the next couple of hours whether he's getting any action on the lures as to what what to do so as with all things we're fishing it's an evolving situation don't want to make too many concrete plans too soon we'll let the conditions and the fish tell us how to fish i think um, but for now just going to watch the water and pray that one of these big uncaught oxfordshire pike pays us a visit So we've left Lou over now, fishing with dead baits. It's safe to say last night was pretty quiet. We fished a couple of hours into darkness and then we got up early and put the rods out again about an hour before dark. And um, cloud cover's come in. It looks really good. And I still think Lou's gonna get a bite on the dead baits. But I'll be honest with you, I wanted to move off and have a go on the lures. As you saw last night, a bit further down the lake, I think it was peg seven, we had that fish around 16, 17 pound. Um, yeah, and I just really fancy another one of these perch and hopefully another big pike. We want, like you can see, we've got cloud cover, but it's actually due to burn off by about nine o'clock, so we haven't got very long at all. With that in mind, I've not gone with carrying so many rods today. I've only got two. One's a large replicant rod and one's a small replicant rod. Um, if there's anything we learned yesterday, it was that the perch didn't really seem to be grouped up when we found them. It seemed to be you get a couple of bites and that'd be it. We tried combing the areas with creature baits as well, but there just didn't seem to be a concentration of them. Now, with that in mind, I want to work these lakes as quickly as possible now with replicants. All the bites did, did come very, very quickly. So I do believe if there is any fish present, we will get them quite quick, but we're just gonna have to keep moving through. Like I say, we might only have till nine o'clock, hopefully 10 o'clock. We haven't got long at all to catch. So we've got to do things quickly. We don't have the luxury of being able to fish lures all through the day in good conditions. So we're kind of up against it, but we're gonna give it a go. Hopefully Lou's going to get something on the dead baits and um, yeah, hopefully I can nail a big perch or a nice pike. Well, bit of an update. Rods have been out about two hours and just had a, an occurrence on the middle rod. The drop off came off but no line was, uh, was peeling off the spool. So I put the drop off back on for about 10 minutes. And then it, we had a couple more bleeps. The drop off twitched a little bit. So I was a bit paranoid that something was going on, whether it was a jack pike or crayfish, because this lake does have craze. So I've uh, decided to wind the bait in. I've, I've wound it in and there was quite a few chunks missing out of, out of the mackerel hook bait, which I think it's pretty fair to assume it's probably the crayfish. So I'm going to now redo the rod. I've swapped over to a herring hook bait and I'm actually going to uh, drop it on a, on a different area. Just if the crayfish are on that zone, I've put some free chops out this morning on that spot. So there could be quite a bit of food there for the craze to be occupied. So I'm going to just try and find another area, another spot here for this rod and I'm going to try herring hook bait I've only got looking at the sky probably an hour tops before that sun comes out and I think the herring it's a bloodier juicier bait and with such a short window I think that's going to give me a better chance of a bite than, than the mackerel the mackerel's a nice tough resilient bait like I say even with the craze attention it was still on when I've wound it in 
Uh, but as we've only got an hour, I don't think the craze will be a big problem for an hour. The extra attraction in the herring, I think it's the, it's the way forward. So I'm going to get it out with a bait boat and uh, I'll talk you through uh, the echo sounder and how, how we locate the spot and the thought process behind it. So I'm just going to let the boat go very slowly at the minute. It's only uh, about, I don't know, 15 yards out. You can see here, this is the marginal shelf as it's dropping down. And as we go out, you'll see we've got 13 foot. And then it, as it goes out, it'll start dropping away even more. As you can see now, we're going into 14, 15. It's pretty, pretty steep as we go. 16 foot now. And then it sort of just levels out for a period before it then drops again. But it's pretty flat there in 17 and I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to drop it. You see there's a nice flat and it's sort of coming up a little bit shallower again there. So this, this, this area here is where I'm going to drop it. So I'm just going to bring it back. And uh, the way I'm going to bring it back is actually with the rod. So I've turned the handset. Ease, ease in the bait boat ever so slight with the rod and I can see on the screen it's nice flat 17 foot which I think is not a bad depth and then it's coming there to the 16.7 so it's just coming up ever so slightly 17 so you can see it's nice nice and flat and that's where I'm going to drop it And then I'm just going to tighten up to it a bit so I can feel it down on a tight line. And then drop it. It's dropped. Feel it down. Bosh. Nice hard. You can see here, really hard bottom, flat. If I was a pike, that's where I'd want to be eating my breakfast. So we'll see. Like I say, we've probably got about an hour and then that sun's going to be out and then I think we need a change of plan. So the rod's dropped now, the boat is back on dry land. So now it's a case of getting the rod on the alarm and the drop off set up. So I'm just gonna talk you through how we do that so I've got the line I've worked the line down as as tight as I can get I can if I pull the line now I can feel the resistance of the lead and then what what you want is for you for your drop off indicator to be no further than the the tip of your spool there then it's a case of opening the bay alarm now depending on the position where your braid is you may have to turn the bay alarm a bit so it's out of the way and then what as you can see here the braid is is on the right hand side of the spool so as, as I want to attach the drop off it will give me a little bit of slack so what I do now because I want this drop off to be tighter to the top of the spool so I put the free spool on on my reel and then I just lift the drop off ever so, so gently so there's no pressure on the on the clips of the the drop off doesn't drop off and I just ease it until it's in position and then I just disengage the freeze ball and now I've got a very tight line and very little resistance we get off often asked by carp anglers in particular that do a bit of pike fishing why why do pike anglers use drop off indicators rather than bobbins or swingers like they would do in carp fishing and it's all about that resistance you want the resistance to be as minimal as possible and consistent so as soon as the pike picks up the bait i'm going to just imitate now what would happen the slightest of pulls that drop offs off you've got indication and the fish is feeling practically zero resistance so it's a lot less likely that it's going to think that there's something suspicious and that it's going to drop your bait so We'll get that back on and then we'll hopefully get a chance before the sun comes out. It's 
So you may have heard me reference um, search baits earlier on. Now, what I mean by that is a bait you can use effectively quite quickly to get around the lake or river wherever you're fishing, but explore it at a much quicker and faster rate than you would be able to do with, for instance, small shads, drop shot, Texas fishing, like creature bait crawling, all of them tactics which are quite slow. Um, we've obviously had a very limited amount of time to search these lakes and we're talking about four or five lakes and we wanted to try and get the best out of them. So we're obviously trying to get around them quick. Um, we've already found that the replicant, like these are the mini, the 10 centimeter versions, these have been effective already. Um, I also tried last night, as you saw when I caught that pike, a small catfish replicant. The curly tail is just a slightly different um, style of lure and can trigger a different response. And obviously that big pike enjoyed that one. Now, I also started with the bladed jigs. With you can put any trailer on there you want. For one, I've, this one's actually currently got a spiky shad, nine centimeter. But yesterday I was trying it with a, uh, a slick finesse. Then you've also got lures, which I have tried these a number of times, but as, of, as a lot of the other lures today, nothing seems to be working, but we've got the little rage spin tails here. These are great, these cast like a bullet, and these can be retrieved quite deeply, and that little blade usually entices something when everything else fails. Now, if I was fishing probably in shallower water, maybe a river, or just didn't have to cast so far as we are today, a little rattling hornet that's a great bait for just ripping through the water letting it pause letting it float up winding it again you can cover plenty of water with that and that'll often get you out of trouble but these are the baits which we're focusing on at the moment wandering around these lakes it is tough i mean we've just had a phone call from lewis and we know that they're not getting on particularly well with he's apparently wound his rods in and he's now gone exploring with float fish dead baits so we're going to keep going round. We have been lucky, more clouds come in, but we just got to keep going and hope. Fingers crossed. Well, unfortunately, nothing happened yesterday evening. We fished up until about 8, 9 p.m. it was into dark and the dead baits remained motionless. We, go, we both were up this morning about an hour before first light. I put my dead bait rods back out. Matt went, did his normal thing wondering about the lures because he can't sit still. <laughs> I think he was probably dr dreaming about lure fishing last night. Yeah, we had to get out there again. After seeing them perch yesterday, we had to go and give it another go, but it has been not yeah. so good, is it? No, almost a, 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 a session of two halves. Yesterday morning in horrific, cold, misty conditions. What we would class as horrific anyway. Yeah, two, two great perch, one apiece. And then yesterday evening, obviously, you had that lovely pike. And yeah. then this morning, it's just, it's just not happened. And the sun is, is beating down and it no. looks terrible, doesn't it? And we've, we've, uh, it's we've... been a good 24 hours, but you yeah, know, time to head has. for home. I mean, to be honest with you, I think all the fish, it was a very front-loaded session, wasn't it? We had them perch very early. It was only the pike we had, that 16, 17-pound pike I had later in the day. Um, that was about the only fish after lunchtime, wasn't it? Everything yeah. else was very early on. We, yeah, so we know from yesterday when that sun was out and bright, it, the fish weren't having it. And we can't be here till dusk today. No. So, so unfortunately, we're going to miss that bite time opportunity. Yeah. But it's been great, new PB for me. I'm, uh, yeah, mate, well done on that. That was a stunning I, I'm really pleased with that. It would have been lovely to catch a pike on dead bait. You know, we know there is a, a few 20 pounders to go out in here, but when you can only fish probably a quarter of the lake, a third of the lake maybe from bank space wise, it's 40 foot deep in places. Given the fact that we had very little knowledge about the Tar Farm complex here at Linear when we came, it's been thoroughly enjoyable, hasn't it? And it's, yeah, it's I think we're both going to be leaving, wanting to come back. There's so much fishing on, on display that we can that we haven't even been able to tap into in the in the time we've been here that 
for sure. I'd love a, I'd love an autumn trip. I think well, on the lures. Honest, that fish you've caught actually is venue record, isn't it? Complex record, I believe, for Tar Farm at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say it, but complex, yeah, have you, as yeah, you've said it, it yeah, it yeah. is. So yeah. I mean, that goes to show what's possible. Yeah, I mean, there could very well be fish five pound sort of stamps swimming around in this place. I mean, there's crayfish in here, isn't there? We've, we've yeah. noticed that. Yeah, who knows how so... big they could go. But yeah, I'll definitely be coming back. And uh, it just goes to show these day ticket carp fisheries, uh, you know, they hold some fantastic predators. You've just got to get out there and give it a go. Yeah, definitely. Well, like you say, at some point in the future, we've got to get back down here, haven't we? I think we've got a score to settle. Defo. Right, Let's do it, home time. <laughs>